Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for May 18th. Uh, Mr. Kiro uh, will hopefully uh, get here eventually, but he may not be able to make it tonight, so you're stuck with the four of us. We are the four brightest and best looking, so, well I am, but. You're everybody's favorite. There you go, thanks. All right, so consent agenda. First of all, for approval, the Arlington International Film Festival, uh, sale of wine at the farmer's market, and placement of sign for the Spy Pond Fun Day. Who's here for the Arlington International Film Festival? Please come forward. Good evening. Um, I'm April Rank, and uh, the director of the festival and the I founder. Was mine. Thank you for hearing our request. Um, we have come before you for the fifth year uh, requesting banners uh, placement in Arlington Center. Uh, we're a little bit more organized this year with specifics. Um, ATED has offered to organize and spot, well, actually, uh, sponsor. Uh, AIFF. The display dates we were looking at town day. Um, we thought it would be appropriate after town day, September 14th through uh, the end of the festival, October the 26th. The banners uh, would be two double sided banners, um, hopefully to be displayed on poles at Medford Street in Mass Ave. Um, the same banners that we have used previously, um, same measurements, seven by three. And the upper Banner would read Arlington International Film Festival, where Arlington and the world converge, and the web, the web address. The lower portion would read the kickoff uh, September the 25th, sponsored by ATED, Arlington Tourism and Economic Development uh, Bureau. Either the town logo or ATED, whichever um, you know is, is decided upon, and festival dates October 15 through 22. Thank you. Um, and certainly, uh, this is an excellent festival. However, it's not being held in Arlington, correct? The actual festival, October 15 through 22, will not be. Our kickoff will be at the town hall. Uh, we continue to do um, screenings here in Arlington. Uh, it, it, this is the home of the festival. It's based here. We're not changing that. We're expanding, we're actually, um, we, we just finished a screening uh, with uh, an Iranian filmmaker uh, at ACMI uh, last week. We have the Robbins Library film series that will run from June to December, which is free to the public. Um, and we're in the middle of negotiations as well um, with the Capitol uh, Theater, uh, looking at doing a retrospective of years past of filming, um, and then also how can we work to move forward. Uh, it's just that we've had to follow where, um, where people want to see films. Um, and it is nothing to do with, um, you know, abandoning the Regent. I think that, you know, we absolutely love the Regent Theater and what they do. Um, but it seems as though film is secondary um, to what they do well, uh, and that's musical acts mm -hmm. and um, comedians, and et cetera, live entertainment like that. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to keep the festival alive and in the meantime continue to explore avenues of how we can continue to provide uh, you know, screenings here in Arlington. Are banners going up in Cambridge for this? I don't know. I really don't know. And if it is, it would be Arlington International Film Festival. Okay. So they have invited us. Um, whether we will do it or not, I don't know. Uh, because we really want to you know, secure the banners here in Arlington first and foremost. Sure. Um. Yeah, Mr. Byrd. Um, thank you very much. No, this is a, it, it's kind of bittersweet. Bitter, we obviously hate to see you go, but um, sweet because um, you've done such a great job and uh, it, it's a real testament to your efforts. And I'm uh, really happy to hear that you're still, um, you know, ha playing, having this, um, the festival play such a large role in Arlington. So I'm grateful for that. So I, I wish you the best of luck and I'm thank happy you. to support this. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, so I, my question was going to be, I think, similar to Mr. Greelius, and so I, def I, well, I'm cons I can support this, but I'm definitely interested in keeping an eye on how much of the economic activity is in Arlington, because you guys, the, your organization did so much, and that was just, so it's been ha great to work with your group for, you know, parking changes and, and, the, and, um, the, and banners and other cooperation. And so, but if, uh, you know, too much of the economic benefit moves out of town, then it's, frankly, it's, you know, we, we need to foster other activity. So um, let's, let's try to keep a lot of the, as much of the activity here in Arlington as we can. I also failed to, uh, to mention that we, we will be having two tables in the lobby of the Kendall Square during the cinema. One will be for our people to be picking up passes, media, that kind of thing. The other table we have offered to ATED, oh. and they will be manning a table for eight days in the lobby of the Regent. Okay. So we are very much interested in promoting Arlington and uh, living up to what we've been saying. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and just to piggyback on what everybody said, um, Perhaps we can get it back to a more Arlington based next year and future years. My only concern is, um, and I don't feel by taking this vote to approve it this year, setting a precedent where someone might come before us and say, well, we're your sister town or city in Cambridge, Belmont, Lexington, and a lot of people from Arlington are going to be coming. So we also want to do the same, similar to what we did for you all. So I would say whatever you can do to get the Arlington Film Festival more squarely back in Arlington next year. Just for myself personally, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I wonder, um, doing a count here in front of you, whether or not you would mind if we tabled this until Mr. Kuro can be here and have a say. That would be would fine. Would you mind that? I mean, because uh, we're talking about starting September 14th. Yes. So I think in June, and quite honestly, I'm undecided at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's an excellent festival, but you can understand how we're disappointed, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I'd rather advertise something else that will be happening in Arlington September 14th through the October 26th. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, do, do my colleagues mind uh, if we table this at this table. point? Okay. Second. Uh, and it, our next meeting is June 8th, and we'll put it on the agenda for that evening. Very good. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the next item under, under uh, the is uh, the farmers market, uh, Kipton. Okay, not here. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. 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 And it's subject to all conditions as sec set forth. All of those in favor. Uh, anybody here wishing to speak on this matter? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Item number three for approval: the placement of a sign for Spy Pond Fun Move Day. Approval. Is there a second? Somebody here wishing to speak on this, uh, the Spy Pond Fund Day? S second for discussion. Second for discussion. And what is that discussion? Sir? Just that uh, with the new Simon by law, we can't exactly approve this, so we can endorse it, but I mean, we can't actually grant the permission to, for this to happen. Right. So I think that we should send them to our good counsel. Yeah, so um, is that an amendment that you're yeah, happy we'll with? Approval, uh, subject to. We'll approval, subject to discussions with town council. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has to do with just at this past town meeting, we have passed new regulations regarding signs. Uh, Mr. Hyman, any, any comment or just? No, I'd be happy to talk with the, uh, with the uh, folks requesting the uh, permission and try to get them pointed in the best direction possible. Thank you. Okay, so further discussion? All those in favor of the motion by Mrs. Mahan, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, appointments, the Arlington Veterans Council. We have our excellent veterans officer here, Jeff Chunglo. Jeff, would you like to speak on this first? Yes, sir, good evening. So, pleased to present our new Veterans Council members. Uh, there is one member who is not present this evening, which is Jeffrey Melton. So, I believe he's finishing up his active duty uh, military duty during the summer. He's a school teacher at the Audison, so, and a fine Navy veteran, I might say. So um, if I can have uh, council members come up, I'll introduce them. This is Anne Marie Russo. Hello. Hi. Hello. Steven Sautel. Hi. Daniel Steiff. Yeah. Patrick Quinn. Hey, Patrick. Hey, stranger. And Bill Hainer. So 
They all bring um, a wide diversity to the group, um, varying ages, experiences, <coughs> uh, veterans' background, um, interest in veterans' uh, benefits, and some of the policies that we need to um, enact and look at in the town. So I'm very pleased with the selections, and uh, if you have any questions for the individual members. Well, how about, Jeff, will you give a paragraph description of what role they'll be playing as a Veterans Council? And could you come up to the mic so the people at home can hear you? Millions at home, Jeff. Yes. Millions. Sure. Um, so the Veterans Council, um, the main focus is to come together as a group. Um, I like a collaborative, diverse group to address a bunch of the, the various needs <coughs> that are present in the town, updating uh, Monument Square, uh, the revision in the monuments, uh, fiscal planning, uh, capital reserves for the ma maintenance and upkeep of our existing monuments in town, uh, looking at establishing policies and procedures for uh, different things such as flags on graves, those policies, uh, maintenance and upkeep, et cetera. Um, so I'm not the, the brightest man uh, to tackle all these issues by myself, and I think I'd be foolhardy to try to. So that's why I rely on these wise individuals to help me. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, a general question, and then I was just wondering if I could to um, Bill, Daniel, Pat, Anne Marie, and Stephen. Um, first, what I would like to ask is in terms of when you will be meeting and where. If, if somebody out in the public says, I'd like to present to this committee um, where you anticipate having your meetings at what town facility, is it a certain night, is it once a month, once every other month? Yeah, I think um, initially we're gonna be looking at once a month, especially to tackle a couple of the, of the more important upcoming issues. Um, anyone is free to attend and we'll publish that as well. Um, even for some of the applicants that did apply that were not selected, mm -hmm. um, I've spoken to them, encouraged them to participate. Uh, they won't be voting members as far as uh, any of the, the matters that we may have to vote on, but uh, their feedback is always welcome. Do you, where do you anticipate meeting? Here in the town Somewhere hall. Somewhere in the town mm -hmm. hall. And if somebody wants to contact about coming to a meeting, getting on an agenda, pr presenting an idea, should they contact you directly? Yes, Or do you have a minister? It's you? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, they can contact me. I'll post everything through the Veterans uh, Facebook page and also on the, the town website as well. Mm -hmm. and, and if I could just ask each of the prospective members either, you know, what you feel you're going to bring to this committee, what it is that you're thinking about you'd like to accomplish on the committee or something else, just so the members of the board can get a sense as well as people at home, because I know quite a few veterans um, have asked me about this newly formed committee. So. Want to start with Anne Marie? No. But. No. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to start with Bill? Yeah. Bill, you want to go first or Anne Marie? So, um, my father was a World War II veteran, and I just grew up not hearing very much about his uh, activities in World War II. Uh, and part of the reason I'm very interested in helping is because I think a lot of the stories don't get told. So I'd like to be able to be a conduit, I guess, for stories if possible. Um, I mentioned to Jeff that I tried to get my dad's name on the memorial in the center of town and was told I couldn't because he wasn't born in Arlington. I have that same thing, Korean so, War vet dad. Yep. That's another mission. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. Um, and I just, this is very dear, near and dear to me, so I don't have a, a better explanation other than just wanting to. That's a great one. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Sartell. Um, my father served this country three times in World War II, Korea, and then as a reservist for the Air Force. My grandmother was a Gold Star mother. She lost her only son in World War II at Guadalcanal. And I have one son who was just the he's inactive reserve Marines right now. He um, completed his four-year duty, and my oldest boy is actually serving in Kuwait now at the Air Force. So I just want to honor the veterans who have chosen to voluntarily serve our country and give them their proper due and make sure they get what is entitled to them when they come back. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Hello, my name is Danny Steiff. I'm a Marine veteran. I did two deployments to Afghanistan, and I want to bring a voice to those Iraq and Afghanistan veterans now that we're starting to come home. 
and I've talked to them and just be a voice for those younger veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Patrick Quinn. Uh, I know what it's like to try and navigate the veterans benefit systems in the VA by yourself, and it's very confusing and it's very difficult. So anything I can do to help navigate that for any of the veterans in Arlington, I'll be happy to. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Patrick. Bill Hainer, uh, I think one of the things that I'd like to bring is uh, the education part. Uh, the young kids, for the most part, unless they have somebody directly involved in the service themselves, depend on television and the news agencies, and I don't think that's always gives the, the true story and stuff. Uh, real quick, I came home uh, and uh, I was ashamed of my participation. That's the way we were treated when we came <coughs> here, and I'm not anymore. I'm proud of it, and I want to communicate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, first, I'd like to move approval of all six and just invite our, uh, the gentleman who can't be with us ton tonight to come back and schedule a future ev event. Um, thank you all for volunteering. Very glad that you're here. I think this is a, a great group, and I think that you're going to do really good things. I will say I'm particularly interested in the role that you're t taking on about uh, working with the younger veterans who are, co who are coming back in town. Uh, I guess um, I'm a little bit closer to your age, I think, than some of the uh, other, you know, the more senior members. Yeah. Uh, one of my best friends went to, uh, was a captain in. Out of order. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one of my best friends was a captain of a tank group in Iraq, and listening to him and his stories about him trying to keep his people together after they came back and still, you know, three years after their deployment is always, uh, you know, harrowing to me to hear that. And so I think that the things that we can do and you can do to, to, um, to help them is a, is a really powerful thing. Thank you. Steven? Um, yeah, no, I just um, will echo my colleague's comments. Um, this is an important group and um, I know that Jeff will do an excellent job leading it, and um, I look forward to all of your inputs. Um, so thank you very much. Second. Uh, also very important to me, Anne-Marie mentioned she didn't know that much about her dad's service. I heard about my dad's service every day. Uh, as a matter of fact, he won the Second World War. I don't know how many of you are aware of that, but my father in the Navy personally was responsible, as he told us <laughs> often. He was a, the supply officer on a supply ship outside of, uh, you know, stationed or whatever you say, uh, uh, at Iwo Jima. But uh, uh, he also, he was born in Woods Hole, so he didn't move to Arlington until five years old. So it also always bothered him that he wasn't a native son uh, of Arlington, although he lived the rest of his life here and certainly considered this his home. Um, uh, Jeff has done an outstanding job with Veteran Services, and uh, with all of you there to help him, it will only continue uh, for this very, very important task. Thank you very, very much for your willingness to serve. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, come back when you need us. God bless. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Patrick, stay there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Patrick doesn't have enough to do with his own business and family matters and everything else, and now on the Veterans Council. Uh, Patrick also is a candidate uh, for the Commission on Disability, correct? Oh. Uh, why would you want to do that? <laughs> and thank you for your willingness to do so. Uh, I've had family members that have been disabled and such, and again, it's seeing them navigate what they can do, and my son's disabled, you know, what we've been trying to do on his education, it's at first, it like, felt like we were you know, swimming upstream the whole time, and then we, found, we got some help. And then we realized how you can actually navigate it when, if you have help and you have some guidance. You know, so anything I can do in regards to that, I'd, I'd be happy to. Thank you for that attitude, Patrick. Uh, questions, motion? Move approval. Move approval, second? Second. Further discussion? Yes, Mrs. Mahan. I guess I would just say, um, and also working through the town manager's office, we just recently completed, completed town meeting and the last Warren article had to do with the master plan. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to look for ways, I know the board, we've taken on a more active reminder to ourselves in terms of when we're discussing issues, um, making sure the Commission on Disability where uh, applicable is um, consulted. But the other thing is, um, if it hasn't happened already, you know, perhaps in the future um, at a Commission on Disability meeting, maybe have an agenda item and 
have someone in who the town manager or town planner think is, a, is appropriate, just, just sort of a highlight. It's a big, huge plan. But um, I'd be interested on what the commission has in terms of remarks of what looks like a really good thing, maybe some things that we've overlooked. The master plan is a guideline, but it's not set in stone. There may be things we have missed or things that we don't do. So I, since you're a brand new member and you're gonna, you have nothing else to do, um, right. I just kind of wanted to bring that into the town manager's attention in terms of where town meeting and the ARB redevelopment board have voted that in as a guideline document that we start incorporating that into future commissions and boards meetings and get some feedback to make sure we didn't miss anything or something we could do better or something that we really hit the nail on. Reminds me of my military service. I get volunteered for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Thank no? you. Thanks, Patrick. All those in favor of uh, the motion by Mr. Byrne, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thanks, Patrick. Thank Take you. care. And how lucky is he? They were back to back. You know? Yeah. That never happens. <laughs> uh, next is a request for a food vendor's license, the Fenway Market on uh, 203 Broadway. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Tell us a little bit about your request, please. Uh, my request is on a 203 Broadway. Right now, it's operating as a junior's market, operating by the Billy. And I would like to take over that place and run as a Fenway market. It's the same as usual, but <coughs> longer hours and a more uh, grocery for, for the community. OK. Questions, motion by the board? Yep. Uh, can you, so I read from your application, I guess you have another establishment in Boston, is that yes. right? Is it just one, or is it? Just one in Boston. Could you tell me about that one as well? Just uh, That one I opened up in uh, 2011, four years ago. It's running successfully, and I, I would like to open up, get the second one. Uh, move approval subject to all conditions. And we'd like to know about how much time you feel you'll spend here versus in Boston. Uh, here, I'm going to be the full time here versus the Boston. Boston, I'm just going to go once a week okay. because me and my wife actually, she is helping me all the time. So we're working together. So she's going to be taking care of the Boston, and I'm going to be taking care of here. Is your wife the brains of the operation? I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> is she the smart one? I'm, I'm being fresh. Say she's, yes. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> she's nodding her head, yes. I don't know. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Ms. Mahan. Um, I'm just going to raise something, and unless Mrs. Kropelka or the town manager, Mr. Chaplin, have anything to add, we did get a memo from Detective DeFrancisco um, regarding um, looking into the pending application and that if anything came to light. I just wanted to. Uh, it's my understanding that it did not. OK, thank you. OK, anybody else? OK, uh, who made the motion? I did. OK. Second. Uh, so on the motion, subject to all conditions as set forth and seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye, all aye. those aye. opposed. Uh, thank you for choosing Arlington. Best of luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Common Victuallers for Sugo Italian Kitchen. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, my sister's a little under the weather, so I'm going to be doing the talking for her. She's, she's the general manager. Yeah, I'm going to be your general manager. This is Rudy? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, as, you, as you well know, we requested the Victor license for Francesca's Italian Kitchen, which would be Sugo uh, Cucina Italiana, which is uh, basically the same. We're going to be doing the same thing with a little twist here and there. We're going to sell some cured meats and uh, art artisanal cheeses and uh, fresh condiments that we're going to make in on premise. And uh, we're going to ramp up the uh, selections as far as pasta goes. Uh, certain items my mother used to make. We're going to use a lot of her recipes. Hopefully, everybody will uh, like them, and uh, hope you all come in to check it out too. But um, we're going to fix the place up a little bit, uh, give it a fresh new look, and hopefully, with the uh, all the great things you guys are doing on Mass Ave, that'll that'll uh, go in hand in hand. So that's about it. If you have any questions. 
By any chance, did you bring a sample of the crispy, boneless pork chop? No, I did not. But now that I know you have it on, on your radar, I will. I will commit and check it out. Okay. Uh, yes, Ms. Mahan. Move approval on just one housekeeping question. Yes. On the picky one. I just want to make sure that we can just, um, in your application, you have your hours um, Monday, Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, you have 10 to 4 p.m. We're going to assume right. Sunday is 10 a.m. Exactly. So we can just make that change administratively. Because yeah. technically you could be open 10 p.m. to 4 p.m. But it's 10 a.m. <laughs> to 4 p.m. on yes. Sunday. It's just Sorry about that. No, no, that's... Well, I'm we plan on like, doing brunch on Sunday. Yeah. So, oh, no, that's fine. I'm yeah. just, you know, I used to work at ABC and work okay. at... Okay. I used to see things like that. Um, it's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you very much. So, so will the crispy boneless pork chop <laughs> be on It'll the brunch menu? It'll be available every seven days a week. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, Dad. Uh, second, when do you hope to hope to open? Uh, well, we have to pass papers uh, within um, within the, about a week within the approval for the license. Oh, okay. And uh, hopefully by mid June we'll be up and operating. Cool. There's not a whole lot of work we have to do. Uh, like I said, just give it a fresh cosmetic. face, mostly cosmetic work. Uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, issues that uh, Natasha from the Board of Health mentioned that I knew already that I had to take care of so those are already in our plan up for our plan for renovation and uh, hopefully by mid-June cool thank you I'd like to be open for the festival that you have on by was it on the 24th I believe or town day you know? no feast of, feast of, feast of, feast feast of the east feast of the east feast of the east, feast of the east. I, th I think it's yeah I'd like to be well. open for that yeah, if, yeah. No, God will. So, not, we'll uh, am I right, not seeking an alcohol license at this point? Not at this time. We might in the future. I mean, come on, see this pork chop, no wine. <laughs> I know, I know. A nice glass of Sauvignon Blanc, but that would be really nice, actually. Will you have delivery? Yeah. Yes, we will. Thank you. And I'll have an outside vendor that will be doing that. Whatever you um, want. Yeah, we'll do delivery, and we're going to do some business and residential catering also. Mr. Byrne. Um, no, thank you uh, very much. I know um, Francesca's has built up a loyal following, yeah. so I hope. Um, Joe's a um, great guy. Yeah, Joe, he is good, and I'm uh, sure that you'll uh, build off of that, so good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, I believe? No, right? uh, Mrs. No, Mahan. Ms. Mahan, sorry. Uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much for choosing Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll see me in there. Pork chop, You'll I see know. me in there. All right. Thank the you. side of pasta bolognese. Huh? Come on. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, change of manager, not your average Joe's. Uh, David Chambers. I see two gentlemen who are not David Chambers. We. Can we table it? Because I yeah. did want to raise something. Me too. Yes. To table? Okay. Move to Second. table. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, Mr. Carabello, Mr. Robert, either one of you, any items here you're interested in in particular? I'll take them out of order. Well, I, I was, I'm interested in any discussion on Broadway Plaza. The cafe policy. The yeah. outdoor seating. Yeah. 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 Joe? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Not to complain about my son or anything, is it, Joe? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, he is. <clears throat> Joe's done an outstanding job shepherding my son through Matinon, who hopefully will be graduating Thursday night. Thursday night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, uh, next up is the outdoor uh, outside cafe policy. Uh, our excellent town council, Mr. Heim. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. So what I did based on last uh, week's meeting was incorporate the changes that um, Carol Kowalski, our director of planning, had recommended for the purpose of having our sidewalk, uh, sidewalk cafe uh, permit application and policy reflect um, some necessary changes, especially in light of what's, what may uh, happen in terms of the long-term development of Broadway Plaza. Um, You'll see highlighted the changes. I'll walk through them quickly because there are a few additional amendments that I made based on uh, members of the board's comments and directions. So uh, the first uh, key 
here is that because the permit is now basically a yearly permit, an annual permit instead of a one-time fee. Um, secondly, you'll see under the site plan, Ms. Kowalski had laid out, and it's my understanding the board uh, agreed that um, while we ideally would want most um, restaurants using outdoor seating to uh, have those seats as close as possible to the building facade, uh, that there would be certain conditions under which they could be further away. Um, and I haven't changed anything with the conditions that she talked about in her recommendations. I've just basically plugged them into the policy. Uh, next, um, I noted that with respect to the amount of space necessary for an unobstructed passage, uh, I gave a little bit of extra flexibility to the board so that there would be a minimum uh, width of three feet, which is consistent with the ADA, uh, and a recommended width of four, uh, four feet of unobstructed passage uh, for pedestrian traffic. So that basically, you would obviously prefer there be four feet um, but that a minimum of three feet was required, which is consistent with the ADA. That specific situation that she was talking about was actually the space between two uh, cordoned off areas in a place like Broadway Plaza, but it could apply anywhere where there'd be enough room. Um, the next piece that's, that's significant is the insurance piece. So I corroborated Ms. Kowalski's sort of survey of findings with respect to uh, the general liability insurance per occurrence in an annual aggregate that most establishments are required to carry in other municipalities with a similar policy. Um, however, in recognition of what Mr. Curo uh, was raising, what other members of the board were raising <coughs> about concerns about whether this would be too much coverage or whether uh, all restaurants would need this coverage, I essentially bifurcated it. Now, it's up to the board. It would be a very easy thing for, to amend right here, on the, uh, right here at the meeting. But so I put in a policy of one million per occurrence and three million uh, annual aggregate for any restaurant serving alcohol as part of its uh, <coughs> sidewalk cafe space, and a lesser uh, requirement for those restaurants which either don't have an alcohol license or are basically willing to test that they won't serve alcohol outside of three hundred thousand dollars per occurrence and a nine hundred thousand dollar annual aggregate. The couple of pieces uh, that again I really want to follow up on this is that these aren't necessarily going to be uh, new policies that most of these restaurants, especially ones serving alcohol, likely have fairly um, substantial coverage already. Uh, I'm not, I can't speak uh, with an expertise from the insurance industry's perspective, but adding the town of Arlington uh, as an additional insured is fairly commonplace on a lot of contracts involving Arlington. <coughs> um, so it's not an unusual thing to require. Um, that requirement was already in our old regulations, but I uh, plugged it in to note that the insurance certificate has to be received before the actual license is issued because that can be an issue from time to time. That you'll have folks who say, yeah, 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 we'll get you, we'll get you on, we'll get you on, and then you don't actually have the certificate naming you as an additional insured. Uh, the next piece that I, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. It, it, help me understand what 300,000 or 1 million per occurrence and what 900,000 annual aggregate means. So, What's uh, annual aggregate? So basically, these are levels of insurance that we're requiring them to have on an individual claim and then on the aggregate. So that if there's some disastrous incident, you've got enough coverage for a certain amount of damages um, for each individual instance. And but, but the, the aggregate on that would be absurd if you, you know, had you know, 20 incidents in a year. So what we're saying is, is that you have to have a minimum amount of uh, insurance on uh, a certain incident or occurrence uh, that would require right. coverage, but that the total aggregate would only be a, a certain amount. Might be covering up to three incidents, is that's that the idea? Basically right. All right. I mean, I Thank think you. it's, to be, to be honest with you, I'm not an in, in insurance expert, but that's, I think, a, a loose understanding of it. Okay. New rule, only three people at a table. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as I said previously uh, at the last week's meeting, I think a lot of this is not just about making sure that the town is covered. It's about making also sure that the town's citizens are covered and people who are visiting the town are covered uh, because this is the town's space and if people want to use it, we want to make sure that they're sufficiently protected from any number of crazy things that can happen. And again, this is uh, fairly consistent with um, other municipalities where you're talking about good sized municipalities like, I mean, Boston is a slightly more um, onerous process but where you've got municipalities like Boston, where you've got a lot of these different cafes. Um, and I understand that 
<clears throat> some uh, restaurants in Arlington aren't going to have the same business. Uh, so that's why I try to develop the tier approach. Um, the next sort of piece of it uh, is the indemnification and acknowledgement of rights. While the board didn't explicitly discuss this, it seemed that the board would wanted something like this. Um, and basically, it's an agreement that the town is indemnified, which is a different issue than being covered by insurance. It basically says that if there is a lawsuit where the town is named because you've licensed uh, the town property for uh, restaurant service, particularly for alcohol service, that the uh, holder of the license is going to basically indemnify us and uh, take care of any damages that are recovered against the town specifically. So that's probably not um, it's probably not that unusual either. I haven't checked that with every single municipality, but it's it's a fairly commonplace thing for this type of permit as well. And then finally. Um, I'm sorry, I should have noted this, but I also added just the term and non-transferability. Non Each sidewalk cafe permit is valid for one calendar year from the date of issuance and is non-transferable. You just don't want to get into, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as Ms. Kowalski noted, places opening and closing and trying to transfer their um, sidewalk permit without running it by the Board of Selectmen first. Okay. Questions? Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Um, regarding the insurance and indemnification, I think you really have it spot on. I know um, in my day job, I deal with a lot of the risk management, Crico, Covaris, and Traco, as well as the insurance company, Li Liberty Mutual, et cetera. And it's pretty well known and commonplace um, in the industry of a one million, three million. The only other time you see anything higher is whether you're a city like Boston or you're a large physician practice group. And then it's two million, six million. So, um, and, and the reason I'm doing this, I'm kind of throwing myself a softball over the plate, is that I know we're still waiting on a different issue, the Hackney issue, for the state regulatory body to come out with some recommendations. But I'm hoping, if my colleagues feel amenable, if they still haven't, which I don't anticipate they will, because they're just sitting on this, they've thrown it back to the process. If m perhaps maybe in the fall um, we could look at that again and maybe take our own action. I just wanted to point out it's very commonplace the one million, three million, or two million six. So um, I'm certainly in agreement with that. Okay, Mr. Burke. Oh. Um, Mr. Burke. One, one thing with the one year from the date of issuance, uh, the I'm thinking would it be easier for you know record keeping and for the office if we set, you know, a date, like, say, every fiscal year or when it runs out as opposed to just one year from the date of issuance so that, you know, everyone is coming in at the same time for it as opposed to trying to chase down when they begin or when they end. Um, you know, I, I don't have a, a firm date in mind, but just for, a, you know, a procedure and process um, manner, I think that that might be helpful um, as opposed to that. Um, but Maybe concurrent with renewals? Is that? Yeah. But, but when they renew their license, <laughs> if they renew their license, which is in <coughs> December, that first week in December, to do it on that yearly basis, and that if you do it in December, it would be for the January of you know, the following year. That, I think that I think that would be. If that's yeah. agreeable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then certainly the board could offer a prorated license right. now mm -hmm. or at some point later in the year to be renewed mm -hmm. on that. You know, timetable starting in December or January. If I may, Mr. Uh, Greeley, I, I would also note one other thing that the administrative fees for this are usually much higher in other towns. So the, the, the $50 fee, while I understand that, at least the way the policy was written previously, is basically once you get it, you pay it, and that's it. Um, $50 is, is, is pretty low compared to most municipalities who would require any number of variety, of amazing variety of administrative fees associated with something like this. And what are we talking? May to maybe October at the latest? I don't know. That you would serve to, yeah, I mean, yeah. depending on the weather, global warming, I guess. So. I, I've just looked at, oh, excuse me. I'm just going to say, we don't have, the, do we have the hours of operation that they have to end an hour? Do you, we, I remember we, we set it for uh, Fridays and Saturdays, they can serve till 10, or, and Sundays through the rest of, till 9, was it? I forget. Remember, Steve, what we did in the, I, I do remember that. I, 
So I, 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 may be mis I may be mistaken in my own memory, but one of the things that this policy says is that you basically have to follow all the other guidelines and policies of um, the Board of Selectmen, including your alcohol regulations and policies. Are right. you, uh, gentlemen, referencing the alcohol service Outdoors. policy? Because, yeah, I, I think that's in the alcohol policy. alcohol policy. So that's a condition of their alcohol license. And whereas this, I mean, I, I could sort of place some of the, all, all, some or all of the pieces of that into this policy as well, but they're still required to follow the rules of all their other licenses. And so if their license for serving alcohol, for example, has that limitation, it doesn't need to be explicitly stated in, in this if they've already had it under your other policies and edicts. Right, but I, this is specifically for outdoor, so I think, I think we should okay. put in just the outdoor hours. I don't think we need the rest of the alcohol policy or anything. I don't, yeah. you know. What's sure. the harm? And no, it's yeah. a line, right? I can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are the outdoor hours? You, I, I, I believe it is, we were, we we're concerned about noise okay. uh, outside. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that they should have an, uh, I think we said nine, uh, the last drink can be served at nine o'clock on Sunday through Thursday, I think, and 10 o'clock on Friday, Saturday. So people can still be finishing up a meal or whatever, but no more alcohol service after those times. I Did, wasn't here for that, so huh? I was late for that meeting, so I can't. But Steve, you do know. you think that's uh, I, I guess I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, that being said, for, you know, I, I think that if it comes down to just serving alcohol outside or and then finishing your meal outside, I think perhaps it would be sensible to have everything finish outside at the same time, just for you know logistical purposes, but I, I don't remember under the guidelines that we set. All right, well, let's. Uh, it was. I, mean, I I think I wasn't here, but I think I read that it was what you said at uh, ten o'clock on Saturday to Sunday. Can Friday, Saturday. I mean, Friday Saturday. Friday Saturday. Friday Saturday. Yeah. And Sunday through Thursday Sunday was nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah that, that sounds correct to me as well. Yeah. So I. I believe, and we've passed it. We as a board have passed it. So just, I, I would just say, find out what's accurate and put it in put there. Put it in there, All right. yeah. Do you want a question or ask anything? You've got to come up here if you do, Bob. No, I, I did, but I, I was wondering if maybe I should do it at Citizens Open Forum. I don't care. So that we don't do it to the well, We're talking, I thought this is what you wanted to talk yeah. about. Okay. I have a lot of power here, Bob. I'm allowing you to speak, even though it's not Citizens Open Forum. <laughs> yeah, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. Uh, let me just go back to the beginning. Back in October, I was driving by one Saturday morning, and I saw the town construction site with a fenced-off area there. And I said, wow, this must be an emergency of some kind. What the hell's going on? So I uh, pulled over up the road, figuring I'll get a cup of coffee and see what's happening here. And uh, it, was, it was a Saturday, and I'm saying, wow, this is serious. And then it turned out, um, talked to one of the vendors there, one of the owners, shop owners, and they were saying, yeah, this is the worst time for them to be doing it because it disrupts my business and it's not the best thing and so forth. And then I'm thinking, gee, why are we doing this on a Saturday? That's time and a half. We've got other priorities in town, I thought, like the sidewalks across the street that are missing bricks and holes and everything else, but yet we can do this on a time and a half or whatever. So anyway, I inquired about it to find out what was going on. And all we got, all I could get for an answer basically was, well, we just wanted to move, remove the granite stones and we're gonna replace the paving. And no further plans because a comprehensive plan was gonna be developed on a redesign of the whole plaza. And I figured, okay, fine. And then when I saw this in the advocate, I said, it sounds like somebody's ready to go ahead and do something, but is there a design? I don't know what the status of that is at this point and whether we should be you know, committing something to something before we know what we're doing there because the intent was to make it a public space for everybody to use and uh, do concerts or whatever there. So um, that, that's where that stands right now. But my questions are, when you talk about a yearly permit, that's just a seasonal kind of thing, I assume. It was a year round. All right, now what kind of fee goes with uh, renting the space or doing the space? Uh, how much, what's, what do we have? A $50 fee. That's all. Yeah. And so the town is gonna give up 
I don't know how many square feet here. It's probably 400 square feet or so, 500. So we're going to yield that over to a private enterprise in lieu of public space. Right. That's the deal. Yeah. Okay, I'm a little disappointed in that because I thought we'd see something more open and inviting with seating and things for people like down at Davis Square. You look at that space and it's busy with people, kids, and so forth. So does that mean the public would be excluded from sitting at any of those tables? I believe yes. I mean, it, it, it's where we give a permit. Yeah, where, where we, we don't. Where we give us a permit, yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, um, and that's, by the way, it's also why we're doing this yearly, because while there will not be any redesign of the Broadway Plaza this year, if there is to be in the future, it's why we're only giving them out yearly, that it's not a permanent uh, permit. That okay, because that, I, I was told at the time that they would be one, but anyhow, all right. Now, um, the four-foot passage, that, that's, that's secondary sidewalk. That's a main passage there. And currently, it's closer to six feet to the light pole. So I, I would assume that that's going to be maintained along the, the storefront area. The four-foot is not, I mean, your, your entrance to your house is four feet. I mean, three-foot door plus, you know, that's not a lot of space for people with carriages and kids on rollerblades and things like that going through. All right. Um, let me see, I have to put these on for the rest of it. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so restriction of before. Okay, mm -hmm. okay now, um, so th there's no problem in crossing public space with alcohol and things like that, with any liability issues with that, you know, somebody coming along and a waitress spills a drink on a kid or something. Uh, I, I see that as a, an issue. Maybe it's not a big issue. I'm making something that, out of nothing, I think. Uh, outdoor music. Will that be restricted or allowed? That's under a separate license, but that's not part of this license. Okay. All right. Um, Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So they'd have to apply for that separately, Bob. Okay. So no, visit, no casual visitors can use the, this public that space because it's going to be private space technically. And that's... Well, it's a restaurant, Bob, so yes. Yeah, but it's a... Gee, that's cheap really space. Go that's and, that's and cheap. Can you go into Jimmy's and just sit there and not eat or drink? Yeah, I know, but I mean, the thing is, uh, Jimmy's would love to pay only 50 bucks a year to have a, a restaurant, and anybody else would. I think it's really short money. But remember, they have to be a restaurant already. We're not just letting somebody open an outside cafe. I realize that, but it's still, think about it, um, how much you charge to rent. Uh, well, anyway, right. the point is, it's, it's very short money, and I think the town deserves a little more out of it. Um, so I guess that's basically what I have, all right? But again, I'm really disappointed the fact that we could spend money, time and a half, to do this kind of work, which didn't really accomplish anything except put down bricks when we should have been fixing the bricks across the street. And the asphalt bricks that we've been replacing, some of the bricks with have already uh, sunk a little bit, so I think they should be kind of leveled off a little more, so, okay. okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, so now, uh, the, I'm gonna take uh, Citizens Open Forum out of order, and then we'll come back to the, uh, the uh, alcohol. So, uh, Citizens Open Forum. Has anybody signed in, Marie? Yes. The only one, Joe. No one has signed no, in. No, he's here. No one? There's no one? Uh, except in unusual, yeah, come on, Joe. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board <laughs> shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy on which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request unless you need more. Mr. Carabello. I'll try and keep it at three minutes. Sir. I've been before the Board of Selectmen for a, n a number of times about this over the, the last 38 years. I moved to Arlington in 1974 with my wife. We moved to Lake Street in um, 1977. 1977, there was a bud liner or a commuter rail that stopped on Lake Street. There was no bike path then. And uh, some of you might remember that. Um, over the years, I've been on different committees for the state as well as the town dealing with traffic uh, on Route 2 as well as Lake Street. 
Friday evening, I was really upset, and I started to do some investigating. I, I approve, I, I applaud the Board of Selectmen when they asked TAC to do a study about the Lake Street Corridor. And I've got the paperwork here, and I've studied it. And they've done a great job. Friday afternoon, it took me 10 minutes to get from Route 2 to my house, which is at the corner of Little John. That's a long time, and I got frustrated. This has to do with the bike path, and it has been this way since the bike path came in. Christine and myself, my wife Christine and myself, rode the bike path many, many times, from Arlington, Lake Street, all the way to Bedford. I can't do that any longer. I wish I could. I know the board is trying to do something. We have a problem with traffic now. It's going to get worse. We have uplands coming in uh, and Belmont. Mugau wants to put apartments in. What are we going to do about the bike path at Lake Street? They talked about signals. I don't know if that's going to work. Years ago, when we rode the bike path to Lexington in Bedford, there was something called an s ballad I don't know if you know what that is, where a bike would have to maneuver around at the intersection. That, I've talked to <laughs> selectmen about this over the years. That's a, a very low cost type of obstruction. So that right now, we don't have ballads at Lake Street. They come right out. And the cars are stopping. I do it all the time. I don't want to hit a bike. Mm -hmm. I stop for the pedestrian, but I don't want to hit a bike. We need to do something. And again, I'm asking the board. I've been here before, different members of the board. And hopefully, you guys can come up with a solution. Think about that S ballad. You ha they have it on Lexington. The bikes have to maneuver. They can't just come right out. Mm -hmm. They can open them up for emergency. So the uh, fire department and the ambulance can go down. That's all I'm asking. Well, and it, and it makes it, what it, you don't think lights would work, Joe? I don't think the lights gonna work. Mm -hmm. no. I really don't. Well, what, Joe, wait one second. Sorry. No, but you don't believe it, I don't think the lights will work. If, if there's a red light now for the bike path we're talking about, not just Lake Street, right? You don't think that would stop them? All right. They're coming right out. Yeah. They're coming right out. If, if, if I may, Ms. Brown, I'd like to ask one more question. How does the bike path affect you coming from Route 2 to your house? I know where your house is, Joe, right? How does it? How does the bike it? path cost you 10 minutes because every, from Route every, 2? They're queued up. I'm heading, all right, this is in the afternoon. Right. I'm right. heading uh, towards my house from Route 2. Right up Lake Street to right. Little John. Yeah. Everybody's queued up. All those cars, when they get, a, they get up to the bike path, they're stopping. They're looking, making sure there's not a bike. And they're worried. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. No one wants to hit anybody. And Ms. Mann, oh, sorry. No, Ms. Mann's Mann. ahead, but I'm getting, getting in line. I understand what you're saying, and, and to follow up with the chairman's question, because I visit my friend on uh, Dorothy Road, and I know when I get off Route 2, anytime after 5 p.m. It's going to be anywhere from 7 to 12 minutes to, for me to get to Little John to try to get down to uh, Dorothy Road. And what it is is, besides the lights queuing, because people come off Mass Ave, shoot down Orvis Road, and go there, so that starts to back up the traffic. Plus, even Pleasant Street, Route 60, in the afternoon, it, you know it's a parking lot, but it's at least moving. But what, it, what happens is, because there's such a high commuter, pedestrian, bicyclist volume, um, from like 4.35 p.m. on, there's just a steady stream of bicyclists that just have a clear shot across, <coughs> and that backs up traffic, you know, sometimes for two, three, four minutes in a bottleneck at the other end. And what I would say uh, to the town manager, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Lexington has, um, right on Bow Street? They, they've taken those out. They have? Yeah. Okay. Well, but something like that that makes it so that, I mean, 
if there's something that could be put in there so that the bikes have to slow down, stop, and because technically, you know, I, I've spoken to different people and they say, well, unless they dismount their bicycle, they can't just shoot right through. You don't have to stop for them. But traffic is stopping because it just does just. They're shoot. worried about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may, can I? Two things. I think this is Citizens Open Forum as a reminder, so we're all careful about how much discussion we have. And also as a reminder, TAC did literally a year plus of work on their recommendations. We're still working through some testing, and soon I think I'm going to have a proposal back to the board on okay. doing some human-based testing with uh, uh, detail officers. So I, I think before anybody makes any decisions about the merits of tax proposal, we should do some of that testing and then have the board deliberate. I was deliberate. just putting the suggestion, but no. if you said Lexington remove them, then it's not yeah, a option. Them them yeah. Thank you. I appreciate exactly what TAC is doing. I applaud the selectmen and the town for what they're doing also on this. I really do. Um, Joe, hold on one second. Mr. Dunn is on that. Uh, probably was on a bike this evening. On yeah, despite the town manager's caution, I'm going to bull, bull right through. Uh, so I am, uh, so I do bike on that path regularly, and I am very, I mean, uh, I'm one of those people who commutes to Alewife, and I commute back in the afternoon, and I am very, very sympathetic and acutely aware of what the bike traffic does and the pedestrian traffic does to that traffic. And uh, I've done some of my own, you know, just like personal testing on this because I've been so aware of it because of the people that I've talked to. And I come up to that and I come to a complete stop and the cars stop for me and I wave and I say, go ahead. And the car's like, oh no, you go ahead. And I'm like, the light is green, two cars away. And I'm waiting for you to go through because there's a line of people and they just, and they won't do it. So. Um, that's why I, I definitely am leaning strongly towards uh, uh, the light because I think that the light will give those cars the license they need to drive even though I'm, I'm there. So that's, uh, sorry Mr. Manager, but I had to keep going. <laughs> you know, last fall, um, the town uh, placed an officer up there yep. for a couple of nights. Oh. It worked fantastic, yeah. it really did. And you know, it was stopping and that was great. Yep. And I, uh, People weren't not stopping, and the police officer was going, no, no, you've got the green light at the school, yep. Go, keep going. And now um, it's also bad in the morning. They're talking a.m. too, but it's really bad. At 3.30 on the last Friday was the 15th, it was 3.30 in the afternoon that it started. I went outside, it was still 7.45, and it was stop and go. I've been living on that street for over 38 years. I was there, like I told you, when the commuter rail was stopping, there was no lights at the school and there were no lights at Route 2. People yelled at us, yelled at me because I was on the alewife committee, what are you putting lights there for? And it worked. It worked. You know, it's going to get better after school gets out and then it's going to start again at Labor Day, okay? But it, I'm just, with the, the uplands coming in, the Muga property, I hope that doesn't go through, and I appreciate the efforts on the board. Um, with that, I've got a sign out uh, on the lawn about the wetlands, save the wetlands. But anyway, I appreciate your time. I spent more than three minutes, and I apologize if I went over. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else here for Citizens Open Forum? Okay, so back to item 10. Uh, the uh, special al alcohol license. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Did the board, yes. Did the board take a vote on the um, outside seating, the sidewalk cafe licenses? Diane moved approval. Yeah, I thought we moved. Well, no, no one. You want me to retake it or? I'm sorry, I didn't. Did on the motion vote? by Diane and seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor, Wait, what please is say this the vote. On? Is, sorry. Um, what is this vote? Cafe on? The, out, the cafe application. Hmm. He's not sure we voted on it. No. I don't. I didn't think we voted. No one on voted it. on it. I did. No. I had written Diane moved approval, Dan, but I. All right, so we didn't vote. I thought you did. All right. So on that issue, moved approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Dunn. I think right. Uh, uh, if, yes. It? If we, not, I'm certainly. You always. said second for discussion, and then you brought something. All right. Was that the one? No. No. Okay, that's that a different. And, one. and do we have the changes with uh, that we spoke about with it? Just, you know. The only change was timing that I know of. For the outside cafe policy with the, um, the timing of the licenses? Hmm. So you're, so, yeah. 
making them concurrent with the calendar yeah. year or, or license renewals and also adding the piece from the liquor <coughs> license policy which stipulates outdoor serving times. Right. So both, both pieces. Okay, Steve, or you want to see it first before you That's what I've got. I, um, I, I kind of, since we did get this today, I, I thought that we were going to vote on this at the next meeting and just talk about it tonight, to tell you the truth. Was, that was the impression I had. How do the rest of you feel? Are you ready to vote on it, or do you want to wait another meeting? I'd be happy to change it to move receipt. I, uh, yes, I, and so I understand. Do we have the actual licenses coming in the next one, which I'm... A We're going to have this on the agenda June 8th, and um, Joe Mione will be in with Common Ground. Oh. And if John yeah. Tree comes in, we'll have yeah. that one. I don't mind voting them both at the same meeting. Yeah, no, I... I'd feel better, but I, you know, getting it right before, I just wanted a little more time to. Okay, so. Move to table. Move receipt. Well, move receipt. Move receipt, move receipt, yeah. Move receipt. And, it's, and second? Second. All those in favor, please say it in five by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, sorry. Thank you. Uh, my, it won't download any of my documents for some reason, but if the rest of you have it in front of you, for the special alcohol license, this is to replace. Uh, what we used to call the one-day license. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. See, it, it just it keeps showing loading, yeah, but it has all right night. Right yeah. I'm okay right now. I don't that, know. Yeah. Something else? No? You think Let me try to look at it. I'm just curious. Settings. Yeah, Adam, for whatever reason, this keeps dropping the network, and so that's what... So have you all had a chance to read through that and mm -hmm. questions, yep. comments? A uh, couple of the issues were we don't want to call it one day anymore because we have to allow for alcohol delivery the day mm -hmm. before and alcohol pickup the day after. Uh, but questions or comments, Mr. Um, Brown, first? No, just, yeah, just a comment. I know um, from sitting in your seat last year that this was kind of an issue pretty frequently, and um, I'm glad that you took the steps to address it. And um, I hope that this alleviates you know, you. quite a bit of um, you know, concern and issues um, that people have while filing this, and, and I'm sure that uh, Officer Rateau will be happy with these changes as well. So um, I'm very happy to support, and thank you for your work. Thank you. Uh, we do want to be clear, it's any town property now. It's not... Uh, there's been questions out in the gardens as to, you know, where can they or, or uh, do they need a license to serve it in front of the Whittemore Robins or whatever, and the answer is yes. Yep. I, uh, I have, I think, two minor changes, but the, I, I suspect are going to be non-controversial. Uh, of course, as soon... Oh, yeah. Um, so in... This, I think it happens in a, a couple of them, but right now I'm looking at the special alcohol license policy and application. And it says, obviously we're gonna update the approved and revised. And set number five, consistent with section 14, blah, 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 blah. The, um, the responsible person shall be on premises at all times during the days in question. I'm assuming that like, should be present on all, during all hours of operation. Because especially if we're talking like a two-day event, I don't think we're saying that someone has to, you know, set up a tent <laughs> and be there. <laughs> yes. And I think that appears in a couple different places. Uh, it, like literally that, because we... So it's on reference material number two. Is it, what else yes. is it on? Um, there's an... oh, maybe not figure it out, but am I in the right place that that's what you're talking about? I'm calling it reference material number two. So I just... look at, I'd rather look at the title, which is Special Alcohol License Policy and Application. It is, it yes, is. Okay. okay, I got it. Number Thank five, number there's five. just a phrase mm -hmm. there. It says, must be on the premises at all time, and I just think we only mean. Mm -hmm. And the second one. Wait, but uh, let me yep. just, so, yep. so what would the change have to be? All right. One uh, of whom shall be on the premises at all time during the hours of operation on the days in question. Yes. Does That'd that be, take care of that? Yes. Okay. It makes me Good. happy. Thank you. And then, so the. Um, now we're talking, and now I want to point out the special alcohol license application. And this is the thing that we invite the people to fill out. And on page, the page in this section that's numbered four, where at the top it says number of people expected to attend. Can you tell me which reference material it is? Um, five? Sorry, I'm just five, going back. Five and six. Five? No. Uh, no, it's not. Let's oh, no, see. No, 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 no. 
What does it say at the top again? I'll find it. Sure. It says uh, special alcohol license application. It's a second reference. Oh, okay. Thank you. Material. Yeah, I have them. I you look at them all stitched together, and I don't know which number. But you found you found the application. Yes. And okay. Now go to page five. Uh, <coughs> yep. Scroll down to page. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you, Mr. And Chairman. at the very top, please list the names and dates. So sorry, could yeah, I have done your point? No, actually, so sorry. The, then there's a page that starts, number of people expected to attend. And then uh, this is a, con in midway down through there, we say for police, operations commander, or designee. And we invite, uh, the, we have a police officer, or excuse me, uh, the chief or his designee. I asked, uh, I talked to Marie on the phone. I think it's important for this section to like have a box around it, basically, that says for official use only. Because I think when you're filling these out, it gets pretty confusing. It's like, you know, you're supposed to fill out the first 30 lines of this, and then all of a sudden there's a line. Do you find what I've, I was talking about, Kevin? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I don't think it's a, hopefully it's not a big deal, but I'm just, I'm shooting for a little bit more usability in the application and also even a little bit more readability on our part. Because I confess, when I read these applications, I come in, all of a sudden, you know, I'm not talking to the person who's filling out the application <coughs> anymore. And that's all. So you want to put for, Office, I leave it to Marie's okay. uh, capable. We're going to highlight it. We'll okay. Today, yeah. so we'll I agree with Same you. exact thing, but we're just going to highlight it in section so that people know that's for the police to fill out. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I see. All righty. That's it. All set, bud? Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Byrne, any changes? Or? No, I, I was done at singing your praises at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But I just wanted to give you a chance in case there's more. Oh, you, want to, you want to sing some more? That, well, actually, I think I missed it. What did you say exactly, <laughs> Mrs. Mahan? No, 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 I'm all set. All set? Okay, so uh, motion to approve subject to the two amendments recommended by Mr. Dunn. So moved. Okay, and second. Second. And are we clear, Mr. Heim, on what those changes are? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, so uh, item 11, uh, the Community Preservation Committee <coughs> recommended process. Uh, Adam and I got together on this and we had a discussion and we, we, we do expect that we're going to get quite a number of applicants. Mm. Uh, for this position. So, uh, you want to go through this, Adam? Yeah, this, is the, the, this is the process that he and I are recommending to you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, as the Chairman uh, mentioned, he took the initiative to sit down with me and also uh, Karen Malloy, just from her recruitment and screening experience to get some feedback on putting together this process. And basically what we're recommending is, uh, I guess, a three-stage process, a screening process, uh, that would start with each member of the Board of Selectmen naming a designee to a five-member screening committee to look at all resumes that are received. Uh, and, and again, uh, as, as uh, the Chairman mentioned, we, we thought that was a good idea based on what we anticipate to be a really high volume of applications that will probably make it such that interviewing every applicant will not be practical. Uh, so what we're asking is that each member of the board uh, put forward a name for their designee on the screening committee by the next selectmen's meeting, which will be on June 8th, uh, and then that committee will be named. Did you want? Oh, I, no, no, I'll wait like you done. I do have a couple things. <clears throat> Uh, next, uh, also important part of this would be the drafting of a position or committee service profile. Uh, so we're taking a look at what some other communities have used uh, and also some thoughts that um, Carol Kowalski has had from her prior experience working with a community preservation committee. Uh, so also on June 8th, we'd like to bring that uh, draft profile back before the board for approval. Um, and then if the board approves, we'd like to have it issued uh, or advertised by June 12th of 2015. Uh, allow that to be open, uh, posted with traditional media on the town's website, uh, the town notices and also on social media, and that we keep it open until July 10th, so just shy uh, of a month, about four weeks, uh, open to the public for, um, for response. Uh, then once it's closed, we'll send all of the resumes that are received to this five-member uh, screening committee uh, with the board's designees for review, and we would ask that they then forward uh, all the names that they deem uh, worthy of interview to both myself and Chairman Greeley so that we can schedule interviews by July 24th. 
Uh, and then <clears throat> basically uh, the chairman and I would work to interview the candidates and come back with a slate of four appointments at the board's first meeting in September, which after conferring with town council, we think would most likely be the first meeting that would occur after the attorney general has signed off on the new bylaw. And that, that's basically the extent of what we've laid out and happy to discuss. So a couple of points I'd like to make. One is that, um, again, we don't know the number we're gonna get. So Adam and I intend on, uh, with the screening committee, meeting with them for their first meeting as we help them get organized and leave it up to them. I, I really feel we need to give them a little bit of leeway. I mean, let's say we get 25 applicants for a screening committee. Um, uh, you know, we don't have a, a number of how many we would like handed to us. I would say we want at least eight, I would guess, you know, where, we're, where it's, uh, we want it whittled, whittled down to four. So I'd like the screening committee to have a little bit of leeway if maybe they wanted to do an initial paper screening and then, you know, if they wanted to do telephone interviews or something, but uh, before, you know, I'd, again, I just don't know uh, how many we're going to, uh, to have, but primarily they'd be a paper screening committee. Uh, we discussed that uh, with this board's permission, uh, I would name a chairman of that screening committee and then each of you would name one candidate uh, that you'd like to see on that screening committee. Uh, and I think that's it. Fred? Yeah, I think, I think that covers the, the outline of what we Do you approve that process? You want to change it? Do you, is it, yeah, Ms. Mahan? It's sort of a similar animal as to when we go through the town manager search. One of the things we have in the town manager search that I would like to also duplicate here, um, unless other my colleagues don't, is um, that the each member of the board receive every resume, copy of every resume application that's received, just as an FYI. Total, all of them. Right, okay. like, like sure. one of the town manager um, processes, there were 63 um, it, the first time when we yep. got a previous town manager who wasn't here that long. But what it is, just for my own purview, I'd like Did to- Did you see, vote for that town? No. I Go didn't ahead. even sign the contract, <laughs> sorry. But anyways, um, <laughs> No, but, so I was asked maybe if we could do that again. Um, I don't anticipate it'll be a lot. Absolutely, no problem. Just so we see who's there. And then if for some reason we'll, we can have our designee to say, you know, why didn't this person make the cut? I thought it was a great person, and then you find out how. But I don't anticipate. But I'd, I'd like to see a copy of all the resumes, curriculum vitae, whatever you want to call it. And then the second question, which I don't think is a part of this process, but I want to piggyback on the issue. Once the CPC is formed, what we voted at town meeting, does that already designate who the chairman of the future CPC will be, or is that something the board and our board and town manager needs to, after all the members are selected, that we vote how the chairman is decided of the CPC, not of the screening committee? We could decide them all kind of And I can get an answer or another. Yeah, Ms. Mahon, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I think it's the CPC that selects its chairman. I'll, I'll verify that for you, but I believe curious. so. I'm wondering if there's any state guideline that says, <coughs> and I'm fine with the CPC committee choosing that, but I'd just like mm -hmm. just a little clarity on that. Thank you for letting me kind of bend it there. Okay, no problem. Let's get done. Uh, I think it's a fine process. I am, you hinted at it, but you didn't actually get, I'm thinking I'm going to push a little up, just because I'm curious. So this group, how many names, I know you don't want to pin them down to a number, but roughly how many are you looking for them to whittle it down to? Uh, well, I, 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 I'm saying eight, but I don't, you okay. know, because right. it's our cool. job to bring four before you. Got it. That was a miss. Okay, sorry. In I missed. my opinion. All right. Uh, Thank you. But I can also see, and we, we're about to talk about the controller as well, you know, if there's five, and Adam and I just say, you know what, these five are excellent, we bring all of them before yeah. you maybe, uh, you know, our goal is to bring you four. I, and let's face it, we're going to know a lot of these people yeah. uh, who are applying uh, we, and we're not going to know some of them either, you know, and that's a that's a virtue in and of itself as well. But I see this. I don't. Is is eight too much for us to do interviews? No, I mean, I, I think we're trying to project what's going to happen. Uh, but you know, we we could get thirty resumes, and then it might be hard to not. You know, maybe they have to give us twelve who are all deserving, and we got to sit with them and interview them. Or maybe only twelve people apply, and they struggle to give us eight. So I I think there's going to be. 
we, we have to have some flexibility in terms of what's received yeah. and what the qualifications are. So, um, thank you. So, they will appoint our members at the next meeting, June 8th, and the, the process will be open until July 1? Uh, July 10th. We July try 10th. to get it posted by June 12th, open for four weeks till uh, July 10th. For applying? Yeah, and then we're, we're asking for them to bring the names to us within another month? No, just two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. So this will really be a two week. The screen is going to be pretty quick. Yeah. For the five people that we choose. How, do, you, do you anticipate the meeting a certain amount of times? So I'm trying to think if we have to appoint someone by next week. I feel like I'd, I'd like to give them a, you know, or in yeah. two weeks, I'd like to lay out kind of what they're getting themselves into. I think you have to know their vacation schedule, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Because if they're gone for the month of July, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to be available July 10th to the 24th. And I'd say they probably have to meet twice. They probably have to meet maybe with you and I once, do some initial screening, and then meet again to make some final decisions about what they want to put forward. Well, if I may, let me bring up uh, a, a, another issue. Um, well, I guess it's not so much related to this. I, I, I was going to ask the board on the new business. I just today found out I have to travel on June 22nd. Uh, I have to go to, uh, where am I going? Rochester, New York. I heard it's beautiful. <laughs> Next week I'll be in Denver, so, but, but for this particular uh, business assignment. So I was going to ask the board whether or not we could change that meeting to either the previous week, which would be the 15th, or the following week, the 29th. Now, our goal, uh, Adam and I, in terms of the controller, is to uh, have a recommendation to the have board a recommendation by the 22nd. To you on the 22nd. So if we move to the 15th, first could people do that and give us till the 15th to come up with a name versus June 8th, uh, Steve, would that be helpful? I, I, can, I, uh, can I interrupt? The, the 15th, we will not be able to get a comptroller recommendation by the 15th. Okay, yep. So how about the, well, but the, the 29th would be too late. Yeah, and I, I can't meet on the 15th. Okay. So. How about the 29th versus the 22nd? I'm checking right now. I mean, it, it's not that I have to be here, but if I'm doing the interviews... For the yeah, no, I, I think it would yeah. make sense to... No, I should be around. I agree. How about the 29th, Adam? Are you all right if we did that? Yeah, and in terms of enough time, I mean, if we have names for this by the 29th... Well, no, the, name, the names, we were going to give names by June 8th. I know. Um, we're, we're talking about two things yeah. now. One is CPAC. And you're saying we need CPAC's name of the screening committee by next week, by the next meeting, June 8th. Well, the names would be fine by the 29th. I would say that the, uh, certainly the committee member profile needs to be done on the 8th mm -hmm. so that we can post by June 12th and have it open for a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think I, I can cert I'm, I'm comfortable finding someone by the 8th. I just want, I'm just trying to make sure I can clearly define what they're, what I'm asking them to do. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And, Times. So are we saying names by June 8th, but changing the meeting to the 29th, which will Yeah, I'm sorry, there's two issues in here, aren't you? Right. Yes. Hmm. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay with that? Yep. Okay. Okay. And Joe's not here, sorry, but... So, Marie, we're going to change the 22nd to the 29th is the meeting after June 8th. And we do start casual dress after Memorial Day, yeah. as I was reminded. Yeah. So... Uh, so anything else on this process, uh, Mr. Dunn? Yeah, um, do we have any sense of uh, people we're nominating for the screening committee? Should we indicate anything to, about their eligibility for being on the CPC? Thank you, yes. We should, we should mention they should not be interested in serving on CPAC. Okay. Right, Adam? Correct. Yeah. No inside tracks. That's a very good catch I didn't think of, yeah. I was going to say, well, there you go. So. No, but I was <laughs> yeah. going to say, is it inherent that if right. you're a designee, you will not be an applicant? I guess I'm not naming myself to the screening committee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Anything else? Or? Uh, let me think if I have anything else. Either one of you two, anything else? Okay. So we just are going to give it in writing to you then before. No, because we, I'm this, yeah, okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we ask each of you to have a name for us by the June 8th meeting. Do they have to be here? Huh? No. No. No, I don't feel they have to be here. Okay. Yeah. You? 
Because we've agreed, Adam and I, that we would meet with them the first night that they call the, the okay. meeting together. And again, you know, with your permission, if my appointment is the one we name as chair of that, to it will have to depend on congratulations. Your is. By the way, Steve. <laughs> yeah, and it really is just a two-week everybody will not service. themselves. <laughs> two meetings, right? Well, two yeah, weeks. Uh, yeah, two weeks, two, two meetings. Yeah, yeah, quick screening. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, so can we, someone move approval of the process? We've just so laid out. Second. So move second. Further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, so you want to take a break, Diane? Do you want us to break? Uh, no, I'm going to step out and not be here for this. Oh, time. sorry. Thank you. Right, 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 right. Okay. I told you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Mr. Chapter Lane, I'm the acting comptroller <coughs> and also uh, the process we're going to. We're following on that as great. Well, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So a, a quick update on the recruitment process. Uh, the application period has closed. We received 20 uh, total applicants. Uh, the committee that was recommended initially for screening met today to do an initial screen. Uh, we will then be performing interviews, first round interviews on June 4th, uh, and then hopefully coming back for a second round of final interviews on June 12th, which will set us up to do uh, you know, some make some decisions and then come before the board on June 29th at the meeting we just discussed for what could be one final candidate or possibly multiple, multiple final candidates as we discussed uh, when the process was set forth. Uh, in terms of... So, so just on that, if I may, yep. just also, Adam, would you describe what you were talking about today, <clears throat> uh, not the, the initial interview, so we went through 20, and by the way, it's a good process we should recommend to the screening committee. Uh, each member of the, the five members of that committee, we rated an applicant. One, we definitely should interview. Two, maybe, and three, uh, don't don't call us. We'll call you. Mm -hmm. uh, and each member went through all 20, of, and it takes a while. All 20 and rated, and then there were, I don't remember, but I believe we, were I believe we had to, nine. Yeah, there were there were nine that made the cut, and almost all of the nine had all ones from five raiders. But there were certainly some ones and twos. But uh, Adam explained the next step, which is the test as well. It's not just uh, yeah, so a preliminary the, interview; it's also a test they give them. So certainly, for the first round interview, we would be looking at uh, a face-to-face, -face, a traditional interview that would probably be twenty minutes to a half an hour. But then also uh, have all of the candidates sit down and take. Uh, an assessment, and when I say assessment, probably an Excel uh, worksheet that would, uh, Andrew Flanagan is still developing it, but would take the form of basically recon reconciling an account. Uh, you know, we, we have learned over the past couple of years that um, you can really separate the, is it the wheat from the chaff? Is that the saying? Uh, pretty well putting people through uh, a practical exercise for the job that they're applying for. Uh, sometimes you're unfortunately disappointed and surpri <coughs> surprised negatively about uh, what a good resume cannot do. So we, we find it to be a very effective way to put someone in a little bit of a pressurized situation uh, and then also to see if they actually have the skills necessary. So we want to do that traditional mixed with what we call an assessment center. But they were saying that, you know, in other times when they've done this, uh, ask someone to, an ex to do an ex Excel spreadsheet and they couldn't, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the math example, you know, uh, what, what's ten percent of such and such? So you pick up pretty quick. Yeah, you know, uh, not to go on, not to go on too much about it, but we, you know, you, you expect, uh, you know, people with certain things on their resume and a certain skill level to know how to use formulas in Excel. And we had a lot of experiences where people with otherwise very good resumes are just hard coding numbers and doing them, doing the math on a calculator and then putting it into a spreadsheet, which you don't, for your town comptroller, you probably don't want that. No. no. So Adam, until we hire, a until we hire. Uh, so there, there's um, two things I'm asking the board to consider acting on tonight. Uh, one is to name uh, the current assistant comptroller, Cindy Fields, uh, as acting comptroller. And this is going to allow her to basically act as comptroller, sign payroll and expense warrants, uh, and manage day-to-day -day operation of the office. Uh, important to have that sort of statutorily in place, signed off on by the board. Uh, with really the baseline being the responsibility for reviewing and then signing off on all of those warrants that are processed on a, a weekly basis. Um, and important to mention that uh, as we do whenever any department head level job is 
uh, vacated and someone serves in an interim or temporary role, we would be proposing to pay out of grade uh, salary to this employee, Cindy Fields, while she's acting. The secondary part of this, there's going to be a lot of work to do between the time that Ruth leaves on May 30th uh, and then we hire a replacement, which based on the timeline we've laid out, probably has someone starting in early August, you know, late July, early August, depending on timelines and how much notice they need to give to their employer. Uh, so there will be a lot of year-end closeout work to do with the fiscal year coming to an end on June 30th, uh, as well as audit preparation work with the auditors starting to come in, you know, late July, August for uh, the uh, fiscal year 2015 audit, which will start in earnest again pretty, pretty soon after the closeout of the fiscal year. Um, so we had thought about, uh, you know, trying to solicit uh, some outside help. Um, and Ruth actually proposed that she, within eight to ten hours a week, uh, could keep the ball rolling until uh, a new person is selected. Uh, she proposed the rate, as you saw in the memo, $100 an hour. Um, without doing a formal solicitation, we were able to learn through some conversations that's probably about half of what an outside consultant would charge, so it seems to be a good financial deal for the town. And <coughs> ultimately, she brings the ultimate advantage of, she knows Arlington, she's been the comptroller, she knows the book, she'd be closing out her own books instead of coming in with any learning curve. So. With that said, um, I, I do think these are both important actions for the board to take. Happy to discuss and you know all, alter as you see fit, but uh, to keep integrity in the office, make sure the financial house uh, is kept with integrity and credibility throughout the transition. Uh, questions, comments? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you very much. And um, this seems like a pretty logical process. I'm curious what you see the, you know, I see in the memo what um, the new scope of services is, but th do you have an idea of how that will overlap, how kind of Cindy and Ruth will overlap in their services here and where, how, you know, is the, will there be any tension between, you know, a new comptroller and the old comptroller kind of working in separate roles now? Um between Cindy and Ruth? Yeah. So I, I see what Ruth will come in and do as a contract is very task-based, you know, so take accounts, close them out, take accounts, close them out, and then prepare for the audit. Whereas what we're gonna be asking Cindy to do is really the day-to-day, -day, make sure the staff's showing up on time, manage the workload, make sure bills are getting processed, payroll's getting done, uh, warrants are being signed. So I think there's a little bit of a bifurcation between Ruth's gonna be very task-oriented, she's not gonna be man managing the day-to-day -day staff and Cindy will be managing the day-to-day -day operation and taking care of sort of those day by day. Okay. And they've, they've worked together for a long time, so I think they'll be able to, to manage through that. It's a fair question, though. Thank you. Mr. Doug. Does this have any impact on Ruth's pension or our obligations towards pension or anything like that? It should not have any pension impacts. I will say how much she could earn if this was ever longer term has pension impacts, that you, there's only so much you can earn if you're collecting a pension, uh, but it won't add to her pension. Thank you. Okay. Probably call me tomorrow and say she's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> so motion? Move approval of both uh, the uh, uh, acting comptroller and hiring Ruth um, as a contractor. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Thank you very much. Doug is going to get uh, Diane, because she does not want to miss this next item. On the manager's goal setting meeting, next item up for discussion, Mr. Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it's the time of year that I know the whole board looks to uh, year round for us to get to, <laughs> uh, to put together a goal setting session. So I, I proposed two dates, uh, June 20th and June 27th. Uh, I did have the opportunity at uh, Selectwoman Mahan's suggestion to reach out to Mr. Kuro, and he is not available on the 20th, uh, but is on the 27th. I don't know how that works with everybody else's schedule, uh, but wanted to throw that out there. I prefer the 27th. As do I. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Hmm. Is 27 left you, Mr. Chairman? I'm hoping to God not, but I'll... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get first writing refusal, so... Yes, I can be there. Okay. 27th is fine with me. Yep. And Diane, for you as well. Okay. And 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m.? I'll bring coffee and breakfast. What time? 8? What do we say? Uh, I think well, 8.30 to 11. Does that sound fair to everyone? 
It's like this process never ends. I feel like we just completed it and now I know. we're. And same place, like <laughs> over where your office is in the conference room in Town Hall Annex. Thank you. Thank you very much. Each? I'm sorry, we said till 8 to 11? 8 to 11. 8 to 11. Thank you. So 11 a.m., is that right? I just want to make sure I got it in here. Okay. And uh, the, the next item. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh, Mr. Heim. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so as the board knows, uh, comprehensive pro permit projects have been, received a significant amount of attention in Arlington recently. In the interest of ensuring relevant town boards, commissions, and departments sufficiently resourced uh, with respect to their duties and responsibilities on um, Chapter 40B, we've retained a specialist, Mr. Jonathan Witten, and his firm Witten & Huggins. Um, but because he represents multiple, multiple municipalities with respect to 40B issues, um, he's requested and we agree that, <coughs> appropriate, um, me. that he receive special municipal employee designation for the limited purposes of his work on 40B issues with uh, the town of Arlington and appropriate bodies. And I respectfully request the board's uh, approval for same. Mr. Dunn. Um, you have to forgive me. I don't remember. What is the, what's the, I'm assuming there's like, this is something like there's a potential conflict of interest that we're acknowledging in this. Is that? We're not, ne we're not necessarily acknowledging a conflict of interest, um, but we are saying that there, because uh, this person works for other municipalities, there's always the possibility that somewhere down the road um, they could have some involvement in something that involves Arlington. The conflict of interest rules are slightly different for special municipal employees than they are for regular municipal employees or other folks, and this would clarify any ambiguity and make sure that there's no um, reason why he couldn't continue serving his current clients as well as Arlington for some minimal involvement he had with something when he was a temporarily working with us here. Thank you. Okay. Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Can we just say move approval or do you want Mr. Dunn to read exactly what's being voted? I, I don't think it needs to be run. Okay. Thank right. you. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. No. I'll say all those in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. New business. Are, am I right? No, uh, no correspondence and no need for executive session tonight, Mr. Heim? That's correct. All right. New business. Marie. Funny thing is just Bruce Patty is um, Thursday afternoon from 3 to 5 that anyone can attend, but I know it's during work, so, you know. Really yeah, that. and my, uh, my son graduates that day, unfortunately, and I'm in town working, so I can't if uh, any, any chance anybody else here can be there for us. No? I am unfortunately not available. Wow. We've got to hope Mr. Kiro might be able to do it. Okay, we'll try and get some, yeah. Okay, Mr. Heim? No new business. Mr. Chapdelaine? Uh, very briefly, I had a busy Thursday uh, with a number of the members of the Board of Selectmen last, uh, last week. We had uh, a great ceremony uh, re recognizing both the promotions and new hirings in the fire department at the uh, American Legion. Uh, we also had a Mass Ave public info session, which I understand was pretty well attended, about 40 or 50 people. Uh, with uh, you know, good questions that I, I, my understanding is good dialogue, good back and forth, and uh, you know, responses that were able to be, uh, or, or actions that we were able to be taken, were committed to, and seemed to be a good meeting. Uh, and then the chairman and I got to go to the Touchdown Club annual Ostergren Awards, which was a very nice event. Got to hear Tim Fox, former Patriot player, and that was a nice uh, community event that I think was one of their most well attended. Yeah, it was, Ever, pretty large. So it was, was one uh, of the largest runs I've seen in maybe 20 years that I've been going. So it's a bu busy but good, uh, good week. We had Thank quite you. a conversation at our table regarding the head speaker. You were there, yeah. He, he was uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> know your crowd. <coughs> <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he, he did not. He did he not. He did not. <laughs> Tim Fox, he, he literally, I, I don't know if you could see this from the audience, he literally had it written on the back of envelopes. Do you know how they say that that's uh, <laughs> like like fifty in the uh, oh like, many many uh, all <laughs> and he just kept oh, yeah yeah like they each had about a ten words each and a better speech yeah. please <laughs> and and went away from it far too frequently for the number of uh, pages that he had <laughs> anything else Mr. Oh, Chapter Lane no Mr. Byrne um, 
No, other than that, I really enjoyed the firefighter ceremony and I uh, was very happy to attend. And um, the new hires um, will do a great job and I'm very happy for those who got promoted and they um, deserve quite a bit of credit for all their efforts. And you did an excellent job speaking, representing this board, Mr. I, thank you very much. I, I thought I gave up those duties a few <laughs> months back, but I was happy to step back into that role. Steve and I were getting there. It started at 6, and Steve and I, right about at 6, are driving around the neighborhood trying to find parking spaces. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe how many times we passed each other <laughs> on side <laughs> roads and several. stuff. And would yell out, who's in charge of parking around this place? You know? <laughs> By the way, we both found a space. Mrs. Uh Just two things. Uh, this Thursday at Hardy School at 7 o'clock, uh, the Oak Tree, the developer for the Mugar site, um, Gwen Noyes et al. and others will be uh, presenting their first plans um, that we, I guess it'll be the first time we'll be hearing some of it. Um, there'll be a presentation by Oak Tree with a follow-up Q&A. ACMI will be there to tape it. It will not be run live. It will be on replay. So that's Hardy School Cafeteria, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Um, and this is a meeting hosted by and uh, paid for by Oak Tree developers. And then the second thing is through you, Mr. Chairman, um, the long-standing running issue of Sunnyside. Um, we had agreement three and a half years ago that they would, recognizing that the condition of the road, if they made it exacerbated the conditions, that they would hot top it. I think that was the word. Basically fill in the potholes with gravel. It's been a back and forth between uh, Dan Hunt, who resigned, he was our liaison, ran successfully for state rep, and now with the new transition um, with the new governor and his uh, team. Um, but basically back to um, the starting point. The bottom line is we just say, can you just hot top it or whatever that is, fill in the potholes. They came out and say, well, the, said the road is in such disrepair, it needs a larger solution. And then they said, well, because it needs a large, larger solution by what they caused, they can't justify the cost of it. And they want to leave it the way it is. So I guess I did speak with Representative Garvely, who spoke with the new people over at DCR, um, and what they said was, well, the reason we didn't do what you're asking for, I'm going to say fill in the potholes. I, I can't remember the exact thing. It does need a bigger solution, but because it's so far that the project's been closed out, they don't know that they can justify it. So um, Representative Godley said he will continue to um, just come in and ask them to do the quick fix. They're saying, oh, well, that won't totally repair and restore the road. But the bottom line is they made those lodge holes, craters, and want to be filled in. So anything that the manager um, can do, you know, governor has a new team in place, and or if there's anything else that we can do for the, um, not looking for a free new road for a private way or anything like that, but I'd really, because they're getting really frustrated over there. They feel like we're all talking double talk. And, um, but when you and I, along with the town manager, went in on the microburst, this is something we discussed with commission, then Commissioner Lambert, who promised. So I just and, wanted to. And you and I have emails from one of the last. Uh, Tony. Uh, Tony Bartletta. Yeah, yeah but I don't know that it would be there. done and it never, they, they never followed through. But if we can just turn it back on again and yeah. see if we can. And I did ask Representative Garberly, and I don't know, perhaps if Mr. Byrne um, mm -hmm. could speak to Representative Dan Hunt, who was the original, who's now a state rep, as everyone knows. He was the original liaison at DCR. And I have the emails from him, as does the town manager, as well as Tony, saying that they would fix this. Um, so whoever can get to whoever quick as fast as would be appreciated. So that's it. Thank you very much. And Mr. Dunn. Uh, two things. One, uh, I got a written notice in the mail that says that the town is going to tear up my street and replace my water. I saw your post. Exactly, you which means, um, <laughs> it, so it, it just brought me again to the town website where I could go and find projects around Arlington. And I could click on the water rehab link and I could say, yes, indeed, they're tearing up my street. Um, so I will... I just it, it, I, I say this in jest, but also at the same time, it is nice to know that you can go there. You can see what the projects that are happening this summer. You can see all of the not the water, all just the water rehabs, but the other changes that are happening, all under the DPW section on the town website. The second thing I'll say is Monday is Memorial Day, and the parade steps off at 9:30 a.m. and it goes to the monument in uh, Arlington Center, and then we stop at the various uh, memorials in the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. So, are you going? I will be out of the country. So are you? I've, I'm missing I'm this year. To be there. I should be there. 
Uh, well, I'll get back. I'll be I'm there. hoping to be at the memorial at the center to say a few words. But the walking, I, I just, you know, I yeah. went through the rest of it. I, I'd meet you at the memorial. So yeah. if anybody, if, if anybody could be there to go to the cemetery, I, I think. I don't, did you talk to Jeff about this? I don't. I'm 95% sure I'm going to be there unless right, my husband great. gets called in on Memorial Day. That's why I don't want to 100%. Okay. okay. That's it. That's uh, it. So, um, really, I don't have anything else, although I did just want to um, thank uh, Chief Jefferson. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm especially proud to see uh, John Kelly be named Deputy Chief, Mike Kelly to be named Lieutenant, and uh, there's, there's a couple new ones that I also know who've been appointed. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, but how well run it was by the chief. And then, of course, congratulate our colleague Diane and her cheerleaders for being recognized at that, uh, the touchdown banquet. Uh, that's, uh, that's a very uh, wonderful event to be a part of. And that's it. Move Any to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Next meeting of the Board of Selectmen, June 8th.